first time in over a decade. A lot had changed since my last trip. Sure, there's the San Francisco of days past, from its birth as a Gold Rush era boom city, to Jack Kerouac and the Beat Generation, giving way to the hippies and the summer of love. But like any great city, San Francisco is constantly evolving. Nowadays you'll see a city home to a vibrant immigrant population, alongside the influx of new, hip tech workers. Add on top of that the usual cast of aging hippies, old money plutocrats, and street dwellers, and you'll find a city like nowhere else in the world. In town for four days, one of which was going to be sunny, I decided to try and see as much as I could around the city with what little time I had. I started my day by walking to the one area most associated with San Francisco, Haight-Ashbury, perhaps the most famous street intersection in the country, if not the world. In the early 1960s, a highway was planned to go through the Haight-Ashbury neighborhood of San Francisco. The highway was never built, but the real in the summer of love. Love. the counterculture moved in. Behind me is 710 Ashbury, or better known as the Grateful Dead House. This is where the band lived from 1966 to 1968, through the famed Summer of Love. Just a couple blocks south of Haight-Ashbury, this is a great location for any Grateful Dead fan. If you visit Haight-Ashbury, you'll notice the neighborhood's changed quite a bit, and it's become a little bit commercialized. But believe me, if you walk around long enough, you'll get a whiff of the heyday of the Summer of Love. Nowadays, next to the head shops and record stores, you'll find American Apparel, McDonald's, and of course, Whole Foods. For my next stop, I walk south to the city's present day in neighborhood, the Mission District. Living in Brooklyn now, whenever I travel to other cities, I try to seek out the Brooklyns of those places. Which, now that I think about it, is probably the most irritating thing I've ever said in my life. Quickly gentrifying, and it's home to the conflict of the city right now between the old and the new. It's also home to some of the city's best taco joints, which I'm going to go explore right now. It felt like everybody I met during this trip pleaded for me to eat at Cancun Taqueria. Am I that transparent for my love of inexpensive Mexican food? Nonetheless, I obliged. This is my first stop of my taco standoff. Cancun Taqueria off of Mission Street got the super taco with carne asada. Next on the list for my breakfast taco challenge was El Toro on nearby Valencia Street. For this round at El Toro, I decided to go with the fish taco. So, I'm gonna try. Put a little lemon on there. Peel it up. Wow, it's really good too. Alright, this is gonna be hard to decide. I'm going to go with whoever gives me more free water. San Francisco does its parks really, really well. There's not a lot of cities in the world that offer views like this in their neighborhood parks. Downtown may be better known for its towering office buildings and throngs of tourists, but if you're lucky you'll run into Epic Jazz Flute Man, mid-morning officially made. <laughs> trying to understand San Francisco without understanding the influence of its seafaring history is like trying to explain ABBA's enduring popularity to a rational person. It's nearly impossible. Located on a massive bay, the city has long taken advantage of its unique location. Following the gold rush of 1849, the waterways were clogged with ships transporting everything from fortune seekers and the goods they needed to strike it rich, to imports from Asia, feeding a quickly growing American population filling up the western part of the continent. Taking a boat into the bay today, you'll get amazing views of the city skyline, Park, and of course, Island, the Golden Gate Bridge. Island. Easily the most famous landmark in San Francisco is the Golden Gate Bridge. 
spanning over 1,400 feet long. The bridge was begun in 1933. It was completed four years later in 1937, $1.3 million under budget. This was the longest suspension bridge in the world until 1964, surpassed only by the Verrazano Bridge in New York City. Just outside of the Presidio in the Marina District is the Palace of Fine Arts, which is not actually a palace or home to any fine art, but rather a Greek and Roman influenced monument left over from the 1915 Panama Pacific Exposition. Walking around the monument's grounds is a serene and somewhat surreal experience, known as the Presidio. Near the entranceway of the Presidio is the mecca for every Star Wars fan, Lucasfilm, complete with a Yoda Falcon. After reaching full Jedi Nirvana, you can peek into the lobby and see full-size replicas of Darth Vader and Boba Fett. Yes, this is the part of the video where I officially geek out. When you come to the Presidio, I recommend ditching your car and go hiking. There are actually a number of trails here in the Presidio, some of which go pretty high, but you can get a great view of the Golden Gate Bridge in the bay. I'm trying to get to one cemetery overlook by sunset. I've been up since 6 a.m. doing stuff because three of the days out here are supposed to be rainy. Today is my only sunny day. But remember, I do a lot for you people. Don't forget that. When you get to the top at the end of the day while the sun is beginning to set, you'll have the perfect opportunity to collect your thoughts, let the tacos in your stomach settle, channel your inner Yoda, and hopefully be reminded of how great a city San Francisco really is.